Hello everyone, hope all is well. So the first thing I'd like to say before we start on our topic of privacy is that I do have a YouTube channel and a Facebook page. So if you are so moved and you are watching this on Facebook, please do go and subscribe to me on my YouTube channel. On the other hand, if you are watching this on YouTube, please do send me a friend request and a message if you don't mind, and I can confirm your request on my Facebook page and they can act as backup channels to one another. In the meantime, let's get started on your right to privacy, particularly when it comes to the subject of your privacy and the ouchie fauci passports, all right? So here I am showing you the statement from the Office of the Privacy Commissioner of Canada, okay? I'm gonna repeat that. It's the Office of the Privacy Commissioner of Canada. And again, the topic is your privacy versus the diseases Ochi Fochi passports. And so keep in mind, this is a joint statement by federal, provincial, and territorial privacy commissioners. It's a statement. It's not a law, but it's a statement. And what do they say in this statement? Well, let me point you to this absolute fact that is in this statement. It, meaning the Ochi Fochi passport, it is an encroachment on civil liberties. Let me repeat that. It is, it's not maybe, it is for sure. It is an encroachment on civil liberties. The Office of the Privacy Commissioner of Canada said that it is an encroachment on civil liberties. No question there. It just is. You're breaking the laws. And then they say, so far, we have not been presented with evidence of Ochi Fochi effectiveness to prevent transmission. They are straight out telling you they have absolutely no evidence when it comes to the effectiveness of this Ochi Fochi. Now, I need to say to you, even if you do have evidence that it's effective, it still doesn't change the absolute fact that it's private information, if I take any kind of medicinal things, that it's my right to life, liberty, and security of person, which also means you don't get to put things in me without my consent, and no, it can't be coerced, and the Canadian Bill of Rights also states that I have rights without discrimination. So what are they saying? Well, they're saying we have no evidence of it. So what does that tell me? Well, first of all, you can't make it mandatory for me even if it was effective. But the fact that you're admitting that there is no evidence makes it even more foolish that you would even talk about having one of these things put into play. Why would you even have the discussion if you have no evidence of it? And anybody who knows anything about medicinal things, you can't find out its effectiveness in six months, okay? It takes years to know how effective something is. And then remember, there's another side to effectiveness. Does it have any downsides though? It takes years to find that information out, not months. Now, here's the other point. This for me is the big one. If you happen to be a person that says something like this, well, Shade, you still have a choice, but there's consequences to your choices. Oh yeah? Well, the Office of the Privacy Commissioner of Canada, you know, that office that probably knows the Privacy Act better than you do, and the Charter better than you do, and the Canadian Bill of Rights better than you do, you know, them, they say that that's not true. See? Yeah. They're saying that individuals must have a true choice. See, not just a choice, see? And not a choice with consequences. No, no. A true choice. And in case you're confused on what that means, it is a consent that must not be required as a condition of service. So no, you don't get to say, well, we won't let you use this ice rink unless you choose 
the Ochi Fochi passport. If you don't choose that, and if you don't expose that, and if you don't tell us that, you know what? There's a consequence to that choice, and we will not give you that service. Guess what you're doing? You're breaking the law. And if you are choosing to continue to say statements like that, then you're encouraging people to break the law. That's what I'm communicating. And the reason why you're doing that is because you're ignorant of the true laws of Canada. That's why you are ignorantly saying, oh yeah, you have a choice, but there's consequences to your choices. No, no, there isn't. And if there is, you're breaking the law and you're helping people break the law when you say things like that. Now, this is the Privacy Act. And by the way, there's your date on this modification. So don't even bother trying to tell me that it's too old or something like that, okay? So it was 1985. There's your modification date at the bottom, very recent. And I'm taking you to section four. This is about government institutions getting personal information from you, but keep this in mind. If a government institution has to abide in this law, what do you think a movie theater has to do? They have to completely stay out of your business completely. There is no question. So let's read this. No personal information shall be collected by a government institution unless it relates directly to an operating program or activity of the institution itself. Let's use an example. If there's an auditor that works for the government and they want to audit Joe Smith, the auditor can ask Joe Smith for his financial records because those financial records would relate directly to the government institution that he works for. But that auditor doesn't get to ask Joe Smith if he has hemorrhoids. He doesn't get to ask Joe Smith if he enjoys a few doses of Advil when he has a headache. He doesn't have any right to collect that information because it doesn't relate to auditing. It doesn't relate to the government institution that he works for. It's not the kind of information he needs to be asking about because the auditor doesn't need to collect that information to perform his or her duty. Do you think you're gonna get away with as a restaurant that, I don't know, serves wings and fries? You're gonna try to convince me that that somehow directly relates to your institution? <laughs> I don't think so. All right, so that's the deal. So all of you who appreciate the message here and it's resonating with you, I want you to stand firm and think about this. You have documents like the Privacy Act, like Section 7 of the Charter, like the Canadian Bill of Rights. They don't. You have documents that say you have the right to hold your personal information to yourself and you have the right to choose what medicinal things go into your person. You have that right. They don't have any documents that say they're allowed to override that. There is not one legal document, not one, period. You have the law on your side. So don't be afraid to use those laws. You have that. They, whoever's trying to push this on you, it doesn't matter who it is. I don't care if it's your cousin. I don't care if it's your boss. They have absolutely no legal documents that say that you have to take this into your person. They have no legal documentation that says that, period. So don't let them fool you with their smoke and mirrors and their double talk and their fear mongering. You have this Bill of Rights, not the people who are pushing this. They're trying to override what you have. They're trying to skate around what you have. Don't let them. And I'm gonna leave off with this because I want you all to know, no matter who's watching, that this nation of Canada that I live in does not allow me to have my freedom and these rights. No, 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 no. They acknowledge my freedom. There's a difference. They're recognizing that as a nation, they have no right to take something away from me that wasn't theirs to give me. 
Canada didn't give me my freedom. God did. Now, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And, of course, there's freedom of religion. So you don't have to believe what I believe. But this part is not negotiable. Even the atheist, the agnostic, or any religion must understand that your freedoms don't come from your country. And don't let them fool you into thinking that that's where your freedoms come from. No, this nation just acknowledges that you have them and that they're given to you by God, whether you believe in God or not. So I'm going to read this. The Parliament of Canada affirming that the Canadian nation is founded upon principles that acknowledge the supremacy of God, the dignity and worth, not my non-essentialness. My Canadian nation recognizes the human person and the position of the family in a society of free men. Canada recognizes that I'm free because God made me free. Canada strictly acknowledges what God already gave us. I sincerely hope that this helps someone out there. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Grace and peace.